Hi, I'm Mara Webster with In Creative Company, and today I'm thrilled to be talking about the fantastic movie The Beekeeper with director David Ayer, along with actor Josh Hutcherson. And David, starting with you, I wanted to talk a little bit about how you found a lot of the, the pacing and the rhythm to this movie, particularly when it comes to Jason's character, because he's been living in this space so distant from his past and then it's kind of full throttle forced back into that but obviously there are kind of like little incremental beats of him returning to this former version of himself as long as the way that his relationship with Felicia Rashad's character has influenced a different version of that so I was just really interested in how you found the pacing of that character throughout making the film. Well I think as a filmmaker you you learn pacing over time it's not something that that came natural to me out out the gate starting out and i really understand the value of rhythm and so starting out slow feeling the character feeling jason understanding a little bit about his world sitting with him having an emotional life seeing that emotional life and then he activates and it's a freight train but it's a freight train that keeps picking up speed and picking up speed and a lot of it's a testament to kurt wimmer's script that structure that really allows for that and, and with Jason, he's so kinetic. He's so understanding of how to play action and how action works. So a lot of the challenge was how do you choreograph the action overall so that you can get to a bigger and a bigger, bigger place? Because this thing does go nuts. It gets big. <laughs> And, and Josh, in, in talking about developing your performance and your character, um, I was interested in how the morality played such a foundational part for you, because obviously he's running these incredibly unscrupulous companies and he's incredibly proud of it, but he also has an internal justification and motivation for why. Um, and I was interested in how that was foundational to you finding who this character was. Yeah, that's a great question. Um, you know, I think with Derek, kind of, we did some some work early on about understanding his upbringing and the world that he lives and operates in. And I think that his, there are certain times when certain individuals have so much privilege and money and power that the mor the moral center of them is just so warped and twisted. In his mind, there's kind of a bit of a basis of coming from this more strict kind of perfect type family that this was his dirty little secret kind of side project that he ran. It's like almost like a rebellion, like a middle finger to like all of like this sort of more institutionalized or government based type stuff. Um, so I think that we kind of wanted to base it in that world. But in general, I think Derek's just a very sad, lost guy with a lot of insecurities. I mean, just look at him. Um, and, you know, those uh, exercise themselves in, in pretty nasty ways sometimes. Yeah. And and David, kind of going back to part of what you were mentioning in terms of just the places that this film goes to, you know, given the fact that the parameter is a character who operates as a beekeeper and they very much operate outside of other organizations and, and law enforcement, um, how did that kind of really give you a broad scope of the different places that you could find a lot of playfulness with in terms of how far you wanted to take certain extremities? Well, that's sort of the, the fun of having a beekeeper and establishing kind of the world and world building around a beekeeper because the audience doesn't know what a beekeeper is. And so as we reveal his capabilities, it, it gives you kind of a license to get bigger and bigger and bigger with it. And then it's just something inherent about Jason where you really believe he can pull this stuff <laughs> off. I mean, it's, yeah. he's amazing at it. And the audience loves seeing him, be vengeful and take down bad guys. So it's 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 always tough to build a mythology in a film. And I feel like this one struck the right balance between, you know, you just want to crack the door a little bit, just understand and yet let the imagination play. I love that. You know, and, and off the back of that as well for you, Josh, how did that inform the way that you were thinking about the tone of your performance in this film, knowing that it's kind of incrementally becoming more and more heightened throughout the film overall? Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I didn't, I wasn't too aware of like pushing it necessarily as like the film went on. I think it just naturally happened that way, just the arc of the story and the character, you know, it it wasn't like, oh, now we're at this point in the film, now I can take it up a level. It was like, oh no, Derek is living this experience and he's losing his mind right now. So I can just let that kind of come as it may. So I, I think that if you start as an actor, for me, if I start thinking too big picture about yeah. like the moment of like yeah. tones and stuff, it, I lose it. And that's more on him to kind of guide me and make sure that I'm within the realm of where the movie should be tonally at that at that stage. 
That, that's such a great point. And, and for both of you with the character of Derek as well, you know, I love what you were saying before, Josh, about the, the fragility, because he's just, he's this guy with such an external bravado to him. And he's always trying to create these distractions of anyone really looking too deep. But at the same time, he desperately wants to be seen properly underneath the surface. Um, and so how did the two of you set about collaborating and, and finding the, the inner fragility and how that presents itself in trying to cover it up? I mean, it was definitely just like conversations, I think, just really talking about what his life is like, what his day-to-day -day is, sort of what his mom relationship is, the the element of his father, his upbringing, and just sort of really getting sort of the grasp of, I think that's that's, that's so core to our creation as, as people and just knowing that combined with the world that he grows up in, the money he has access to, um, and like kind of like making him this sort of crypto bro kind of was like a good like <laughs> archetype shell to sort of play with and build from there as well his heavy use of substances to escape sort of his own pain and and demons and stuff um that gave us a good place to to sort of start from and then also like it starts you see it with like the dynamic of with the with the other actors from jeremy irons who i work with a lot to Gemma, who played my mom just kind of Understanding those relationships and what those power dynamics are um, gave it a lot of structure as well, I think. Yeah, I think Derek is somebody, he's like all of us. He just he just wants to be seen. He wants love. He wants connection. And, you know, we talked a lot about ourselves and our own upbringing and who we are because, you know, you have to kind of open yourself up to each other in this kind of project or any project, you know, to be creative and, and, and earn that trust. And you know, we found things in our own lives that, you know, we could build upon. And and Derek, in his mind, is the hero of his own movie. He's not a bad guy. He's he's a savior. He saved his mom. He's done all these wonderful things. He just wants to be loved and recognized. And then you have the addiction layer on top of that in the panic of addiction and having a secret and not wanting to be found out. So, you know, the the core behaviors, who Derek is... I mean, Josh really lived that and was able to do anything from there because once you lay that base, then there's going to be truth in everything he does. And so it just it just became fascinating to watch him pull rabbits out of the hat constantly. And, and Josh, did you find that there were a lot of useful pieces of information that you were able to mine for in the script? Because there's so much in the way that different characters speak to him and the things that they bring up, like Jeremy Irons' character talking about, you know, making sure that people don't find out scandals about him having sex workers. There's the fact that his yeah. mom immediately tells someone to keep an eye and make sure that he stays sober when she knows that he's coming yeah. to visit. And so I feel like there's a lot of information that comes from external characters as well for him. A hundred percent. That kind of speaks to what I was saying, the dynamic with the other actors and characters as well. And I, I do think that finding those little benchmark, like little like flags, like a little notice, like, hey, he's got this problem. It's like, OK, cool. And then you kind of go back, you sort of retrofit that and, and sort of construct him from there. Those little like nuggets are really, really helpful. And, and David, I wanted to talk about your approach when it comes to directing a lot of the action sequences, because you ultimately have to combine a lot of different fight styles because you have Jason's character and the way that he would have been trained. You have, you know, people who are FBI trained, for example, in a very specific way. And then you also have civilians who are thrown into the crosshairs who are just trying to kind of scrap and fight for their lives. And so when you were going through all the, the stunt choreography with your team, how did you kind of keep that in mind for how you wanted to choreograph a lot of those sequences? I mean, I think that's the interesting part that maybe people don't understand about the filmmaking process is how much work goes into choreography and language and grammar. And and Jeremy Marinas, who is my second unit director and did all the fight choreo, is just a, a an expert in human kinetics, body shapes, how we move, how how fights happen. He's he's a fighter. That dude can fight for real. And and he brings a reality to it but also that that heightened movie kind of magic to it. And so everybody comes from their own perspective. Everybody has their own style and it becomes almost a, a conversation of action that scales and unfolds as the movie goes. I also feel like you always create a lot of intimacy in the way that you use the camera. And, and I've heard you talk previously about the fact that you love the intimacy of putting a camera inside of a car because it's so close to the actors. And so how did that idea of intimacy between the the characters and, and the camera really influence the the blocking of this film? It's, it's interesting. I actually operated camera a lot on this. And 
it's, you know, it's one thing to be a director back behind monitor and you kind of whisper to the AD and the AD goes in and gives notes. And it's another thing to be right there on the shop floor with the actors to be present with them and, and, and feel their energy and then be able to move and block the camera to them and, and chase them. So I'm really just following the actors. And then my job as a director is to sort of track all these shots and figure out how they're going to assemble together. That's the hardest part of my job is I'll be sitting there on set. It's like, okay, and darn, we got to go back and get this because it's got to cut with this. So it's like a giant puzzle, a giant Rubik's cube. And it's, it's incredibly satisfying. And when you have like great people to work with who know what they're doing and bring so much passion to it, it just makes my job easier. That's so great. You know, and, and Josh, with everything that you were talking about before in terms of just building and developing this character, you then get the opportunity to also kind of twist and, and play with him a little bit in terms of who does he become when the walls start closing in on him and the pressure starts to mount where we see him get a little bit quieter. He kind of like quietly goes to the corner and gets a drink when nobody's looking as they're all talking around him. Um, and so how did you kind of approach answering the question of who is he going to be when everything closes in? I... I didn't. It, it's weird. Like I didn't going into that whole sequence. I, I it's such a wild run of events that happen that lead him to that spot where he finds himself in, and he's such an unhinged guy at this point with the walls closing in that I didn't really plan on how it was going to be. I didn't go into it thinking like, oh, I'm gonna be quiet now or oh now. Like it's kind of just I wanted to feel it and sort of see. And we tried different versions too, where like he was more. Yeah wild and out there and just out of his mind and moments where he's more quiet and then explodes. And so like just trying to find the the truth and, and feel what kind of feels right in that moment. And, and just knowing, keeping present in my mind as the actor who's playing Derek, sort of where, where he's been leading up to this moment, where he's at in his consumption of drugs and alcohol at this point, where he's at with his sleep, where he's at, like, there's so many like factors that I try to like put inside of me and then just see what happens on the day. And and it was a lot of fun. And, and and David does such an amazing job of giving very specific, amazing directions that just unlock like a little key of, of I remember one time you told me like, just remember that we all are looking to be loved with the tools that we have. And I was like, now do, do it from there. And then one was like, tell your mom about the machine elves. And I was like, I don't know what that means. I just do it. I'm like, okay, cool. So then like this, like, this, like these crazy, like, just very interesting dynamic pieces of direction that got gave me such a freedom. And also when, when you have a director that's really watching your performance and really in there with the camera too, with that intimacy, it's a level of trust that's amazing. And I just like gave myself over to be like, okay, I don't know what you're talking about exactly, but I'm going to go for it and do it. And just to know that there's that trust that he's puppeteering it in this in this really interesting way. And, and lastly, we only have a couple of minutes, but David, I did want to also just ask you about the sound design because it's so meticulous in terms of the tiny details. Like you have Jason pushing someone's nose up into their head and you hear the sound of, of what that's like. Um, and so how did you approach really creating that? I've, I've always been in the sound. Uh, it's, it's such a, um, it's part of the magic of film. And it's interesting. You make a movie, you do the assembly, you know, you're sort of working with your set recordings and things like that. And then you go in and you do a final mix and there'll be 30, 60 tracks of, of sound effects just, just for a moment on screen and, and how you balance that and how you create a sound field and how you move that sound around. So it's just, it's what gives film that, that lived in 3d quality that gives you that, that presence on screen. And, and my game is I like to play with get loud, get quiet, get loud, get quiet and articulate the detail of it. And I, I think I do drive the sound guys a little bit crazy because, you know, I was a submarine sonar technician. So I hear everything. And what's that? What's that? What's that? And so it's just, it's part of filmmaking, the magic of filmmaking. I love that. Well, congratulations on the film to both of you. And thank you so much for talking all about the process and making it. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank you.